Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Uh, blessings, everyone. I'm Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me on the Word Podcast. Uh, as I shared yesterday, we're starting local Bible studies here beginning today. As a matter of fact, September the 5th, 2017. So if you live locally, uh, drop me a note and I'll tell you where we meet and all that kind of stuff. Come by and and study the Word of God with us. <clears throat> and in light of that, that's what we've been looking at in yesterday's episode and today, how important it is for us uh, to realize that we are to... Um, <clears throat> handle the word of truth, the word of God accurately, and we're to be diligent in doing so, and to where we won't be ashamed before the Most High God. And the context of all that is to where uh, you won't get caught up in this useless wrangling of words and empty chatter and worldly chatter and the type of thing which really brings a ruin to hearers. And Paul had told Timothy, he said, hey, it's like a gangrene that's spreading among those two guys. And so the last verse we saw yesterday in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 told us that the Lord knows those who are His. And everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from wickedness. So he's saying this, God knows the ones that are truly His, okay? And the ones that will get caught up in uh, this worldly chatter and do all this kind of stuff and do all this may not be re- truly His, okay? If you name the name of the Lord, then we are to abstain from wickedness. Now, verse 20, let's read the, the balance of this chapter and listen to what he says. He gives an example. Now, in a large house, there are not only gold and silver vessels, but also vessels of wood and of earthenware, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from these things, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified, useful to the master, and prepared for every good work. So it's sort of like he's saying, hey, let's have a spiritual cleaning of the dishes right here. Let's sanctify ourselves from those evil things and from that wickedness. Let's reject that. Let's not get caught up in this stuff anymore, folks. And let's move on and let's press on. And then he tells him some things here. Verse 22. And a couple of these passages are very familiar, but now we know a little more about the context. Now, flee from youthful lust and pursue righteousness. So he's saying, hey, flee this youthful lust. And he's not saying just the, the, the lust that youth have, because as you get older, you find out the youthful lust is still there, right? He said, flee this lust type of thing and pursue righteousness, faith, hope, and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. So he's telling them, rather than going after the youthful lust, flee them and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. And do it with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Do it with the true body of Christ. Don't get caught up in these other things and these other situations. And so this verse right here really sort of gives us a real strong teaching. Uh, You know, sometimes people say, well, you know, I know I shouldn't hang out with this person and this and that, and I know that's probably bad for me, but they go to church with me, and we're all believers, so they must be all right. Well, not necessarily so. He says, pursue this righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Huh. There will be those who will call upon the Lord from an impure heart. There will be those who seek to call upon the Lord simply out of selfish motivation. And he says, you know what? Don't deal with them. Don't deal with them at all. Watch the next verse, verse 23. But refuse foolish and ignorant speculations, knowing that they produce quarrels. You will have people, uh, even people who are actually saved, but particularly people who are not saved but are very religious, who will come along and will seek to create foolish and ignorant speculations and arguments and quarrels. They'll, they'll go into the yeah buts and the what abouts. In other words, yeah, but what about this? You know, that type of thing. And they're really not seeking for the truth. They're just seeking to trip people up. And quite often it's motivated by their attempt to show how insightful they are, how intelligent they are, how enlightened they are. And the Lord's saying, don't have anything to do with this. Refuse foolish and ignorant speculations. And why? 
you know that they're going to produce quarrels. So I'm not going to go into that. Uh, uh, quite often when people say things like this, I'll say, well, here's what the word of the Lord says. And people say, well, yeah, but I think this and this. I understand that. But this is what the word of the Lord says about that. Well, yeah, but don't you think about this? Yet? This is what the word of the Lord says. Well, I know that, but I think this. Well, what's being revealed there, right? So just stand upon the word of the Lord. And that's what he's saying here. But we do it with the right heart. Verse 24 shows us the heart. <coughs> Excuse me. The Lord's bondservant must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to all, able to teach, patient when wronged, with gentleness correcting those who are in opposition. If perhaps God may grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of the truth. Oh, boy, that's a couple loaded verses right there. He's actually showing us how we as bond servants are to be. We're not to be quarrelsome. Okay, We're to be kind to everybody. We should be able to teach the truth of the Word of God. Now, quite often people get distracted by that because they think they have to be like a seminary professor. Uh, heaven forbid. Okay? Uh, no, you need to be able to teach forth the truth. That's the whole thing. Now, this is definitely a letter that's aimed at Timothy. Okay? He's writing it to Timothy, right? But it applies to us also. Able to teach that we're patient when wrong. That shows us that we're going to be wronged. Things are going to happen, but we're to be patient. And that there's going to be opposition. And when the opposition comes, <coughs> that we correct this opposition, but we correct them in, uh, in gentleness. To what purpose? And this is great. If perhaps God may grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of truth. This one who is your greatest enemy, who's coming against you and causing you the greatest harm, may be the one that the Lord is going to grant repentance to and lead them to the truth. I mean, I could tell you some examples about that that would be flat out amazing. Some of the godliest people and the greatest teachers of the Word of God and people who walk in the power of the Holy Spirit were absolute hellions when they were young. Well, God granted them repentance. And so we need to have that attitude about everybody in every situation. So let me back up verse 24 and read the last three verses together because it's one sentence. The Lord's bondservant must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to all able to teach, patient when wronged, with gentleness correcting those who are in opposition. If perhaps God will grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. Isn't that great? Paul's saying, who knows? We need to live this way, not be quarrelsome. We need to walk this way, be kind, able to teach, be patient, be gentle, correct those who are in opposition. Who knows? God may totally turn them. Too often we're scared to correct those in opposition because we think it'll turn them away from the Most High God when the correcting of those in opposition may be the very thing that draws them to the Lord and helps them escape from the snare of the devil help them escape from the one who is captured. So we really must be bold and in living and loving the truth of the Word of God. Okay, We can't just be back in this little milk toast kind of thing and say, well, I don't want to upset them because they might drive them away from the kingdom. They're already away from the kingdom. Okay, Just don't be quarrelsome. Correct them gently. Be patient. Be kind. Teach them the truth and watch what happens. Again, I'm Dale. And I thank you so much for being with me. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.